Hello everyone, P441 here. So here I have a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer LS and what I'm going to be doing today is upgrading the rear view mirror. You'll notice it's actually missing. It's right here. Uh, what happened is it actually fell off of the uh, windshield and the button is stuck in there because somebody used super glue. I can't get it out. I wanted to upgrade it anyway, so no better time than now. Now since this is an LS, it only has a readout for the passenger airbag indicator. It's manual dimming, doesn't have comp compass or temperature functions, very low trim mirror. So I'm going to be swapping out with this mirror, which is auto dimming and has a uh, compass and temperature readouts. Now before I get started, uh, there's a few things I want to mention about fitment. Number one, you're going to want to make sure you have this connector and this is what it looks like on the back of the mirror. If you have that connector, it's gonna make this very easy. It's gonna be almost plug and play. You'll be able to use many different mirrors. If you don't have that connector, you can still do this, but you'll have to wire everything up manually. Now the next thing is your climate controls. Yes, your climate controls will affect what mirror you wanna run on this vehicle. Now, if yours is like mine, it has the manual climate controls. You see we just have knobs and sliders. Then you can run either a mirror that has a compass and temperature readout or you can run a mirror with a compass only readout and you can easily tell the difference between the two because compass only mirrors have one row on the display and compass and temperature mirrors have two rows on the display. Now if you have automatic climate control you're going to want to run a compass only mirror and the reason for that is because vehicles with automatic climate control are wired to display the temperature on the actual climate controls themselves. So if you put one of these mirrors that has the display for temperature on your car, it's just going to read NC on the temperature line for no connection and it's not going to work and there's really just no point in that. Other than that, just try to get something that has the that will retain the same functions you had before. Now you probably noticed my old mirror has the passenger airbag readout and my new mirror does not that means I will be losing that functionality but honestly I'm not too concerned about it. I can always swap the mirror out easily for one that does have it later on now the other thing I know everybody's gonna ask me and the answer is no adding a mirror with on start buttons will not give your car on star the mirror only contains the buttons it does not contain the modules that control on star functions so that's it about unfitment let's go ahead and get this put on So this is going to be very simple and easy. We just plug in the mirror and then it slides over the mounting button like so. Now there's a torque screw in the middle, a set screw. We're just going to snug that down just gently and that's it. Our mirror is installed. Okay, let's give this a try real quick. Now you can see we're already getting a readout from the compass. Now because this is an electronic compass, we will have to recalibrate it for an accurate readout. But you'll notice on our temperature readout, we're just getting OC, that's for open connection. And that is because this car does not have the wiring and sensor necessary um, for the temperature function. So we will have to add that now. Now GM has actually made this extremely simple. Most of the wiring for the ambient temperature sensor is actually already there. If you look right over here at this little connector on the side of the fender, you'll notice we have two wires coming in on this side, but we don't have two more, two more wires coming out of this side. They're just blocked off. These wires are actually for the ambient temperature sensor. The only difference between the cars that did and didn't have it is the wiring from this connector all the way down to the sensor which goes into that hole right over there. Now rather than trying to find the right pins or cutting, splicing and trying to locate the right temperature sensor, what I did is while I was at the junkyard getting the mirror, I went ahead and I pulled all of the wiring out of one of the harnesses from the temperature sensor, including the sensor, all the way up to that connector and you can see I actually de-pinned um, that connector so now what I can do is I can put these pins right into that connector and I'll have a nice solid connection all the way. It won't have any splices or anything like that. Now how you run the wires is really up to you. As long as the sensor is there and it's connected in the right spot, it'll work. But I'm actually going to spend some extra time, pull this battery out, and I'm going to run it in the factory harness so that I get a nice factory appearance. 
All right, so I've combined the new wires with the existing harness. Can you see the new tape down there? We got our pins coming out down here, ready to go into that connector. And then ambient temp sensor down here. We'll just pop that in. Just need to get a little bit of a grip on there. It should pop right in. All right, can you see that? in there all nice so now we need to add our pins into this connector so first let's pull it apart now you can see we have our green on the outside brown on the inside really even if we mix these up it'll work fine but we're gonna put them in the right spot because we can why not might as well do it the way it's supposed to be so the first thing we'll need to do is pop off this little guard right here. I'm just gonna use a small flat head for this. And now the back side. Now this is what helps to keep the wires in the back side of the plug. Now you see we have all these blanking plugs for various positions that aren't used on this car. So we are going to pull out these last two a little pair of pliers there we go okay so we'll do the brown first that's one's going to be on the inside oh getting ahead of myself here we need to pop that out Okay, now what this does is it locks the tabs that holds the pin in. So you see how the pins are oriented. We need the, uh, this pin that we're putting in to be oriented the same way. So it's going to be just like that. Pop that in there. You can see it come through and it's in. Same for the other one. Now reinstall the retainer and then finally this little cage on the back. And each wire is going to go through its own slot. And that's it. All right, now just to add a little bit of wire loom here because the old stuff broke apart. All right, we should be good to go. All right, let's give it a try. And we have temperature, what have we got? 89 degrees. We got another thermometer here. We've got well, eh, somewhere in the 80s, so not perfect. We're in the ballpark. There is going to be variation between inside the car versus outside where the sensor is. Um, so we'll just have to give it some time and see how accurate that sensor is. It is a junkyard sensor, so I might need to uh, put a new sensor in to get it a little more accurate, but we'll see. Um, compass will of course need to be calibrated um, people always ask me uh, what parts are used uh, all these parts I used for this came from the junkyard but anything I do have part numbers for I will list those in the description some people might ask how you end up with four different auto dimming mirrors and five different temperature sensors well the answer is pretty simple it's an all-you-can-carry special at the junkyard, and you can carry it.